Hi, I'm Tom McShay here with Brian Hong from Namco Bandai, and we're here to talk about Dark Souls 2. So what I realized with Dark Souls and Demon Souls before is it has the most dedicated fan base of just about any franchise I can think of. Is there a reason why so many people are drawn and then they're so excited and immersed in this community? Yeah, you know, I think it's because of many things, but one in particular uh, that comes to my mind is because of the way the game's story is told to you or not told to you. A lot of it is kind of uh, learned as you go through and interact with NPCs. A lot of it is inferred, and there's a lot of Sometimes speculation, but a lot of inference, right? So community members and community leaders out there, key ones like, you know, you've got your Epic Name Bros and you've got your Vodvidias who are, you know, helping that process along and a lot of people want to talk to each other. So, you know, there's so many different ways to tell a story in a game. Uh, the medium that is a video game, there's so many different ways to do that. From software's chosen to do it in a very specific way that's really off the beaten path. Uh, I think if you ask them, they'll tell you that it wasn't part of the master plan to have this community bite sprout out because of the way that they've told the story of the game, but definitely that is kind of a side effect that, uh, that has happened. Yeah, one of the things I realized is because the game is both uh, obtuse and difficult, it's really tough to get through without some outside help. It was almost like when I was playing games 20 years ago and I couldn't get through Zelda without asking it. So do you think that is, is helping the community grow together as opposed to like the competitive, competitive communities which are a little more antagonistic, I guess? Yeah, you know, I think you touched on a, on a real key point, Todd, especially since we were talking off camera before and you've told me that you uh, recently, you know, finished the game and you're such a big fan of it. And you were telling me even yourself about, you know, how you got into the game. And it's a common thing that we hear from a lot of folks is that they pick up the game and they try it. Uh, and then they give it up and they say, ah, I don't know. But then when they pick it back up and they do it a second time, that light bulb goes on, right? And the, the music to my ears is when I've talked to some other hardcore gamers and they say, man, you know what? I, it reminds me of why I'm a gamer. And what better way to compliment you know, an experience that, uh, that you can have than to say something like that, right? So a lot of AAA games come out and they sell a lot and then they still lose money. We hear the stories all the time. Dark Souls sold about 2.4 million, and I remember from software being ecstatic about that. Is there similar realistic expectations with Dark Souls 2, or is there a bigger budget, bigger investment, and you hope to get a bigger return also? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, they were ecstatic, as were we. Um, mostly because it was like, wow, we felt like, you know, this is kind of an obtuse and difficult game. It's, in a lot of ways, it is a niche game, but yet, who knew the niche was this big? You know, when all these people said, I love this game, right? So when we looked at it uh, and we said, hey, Dark Souls 2, what do we want to do? Um, no, we didn't go crazy with, uh, with our budgets. We wanted to make sure that all the, all the assets that we came out with and all the you know, communications were still true to the game and we could really get the word out. But you know, it's, that, it's that analogy that, uh, that I like to use. Actually, we actually did this during our strategic planning meetings was, did we make the game easier? Should we make the game easier to make it more appealing to a mass market to try and get those dollars? No, uh, was my answer. I mean, it's, at least from my point of view, because you look at um, products like the Mac. You know, six, seven years ago, everyone was talking about HPs and, and the Windows programs, and that was the dominant platform of, of laptops. And the Mac was just kind of humming along doing its thing. And it didn't change to meet what the market was. It stayed to what the Mac was supposed to be in the vision of the creators of the Mac. And what eventually happened very organically was the, the market actually came around to the Mac and realized this is a superior, a superior type of laptop. And you know, I'm not speaking as a, as a proponent of Apple, but for me, it was a very good example of don't change your product to meet what the market is stick to what your product is meant to be in your own vision and the people that share that vision will eventually come to your product and that was the analogy that i tried to give to everybody at least on our side with dark souls 2 from from my position from my vantage point uh, so you work exclusively on dark souls and dark souls 2 what is the most exciting thing about your job what makes you excited to come to work <laughs> Well, no, I don't know that too many gamers out there really care a whole lot about you know my type of job, and, and my job is marketing. And uh, you know, I'll, I'll share a story about Dark Souls. It was one of the first games that they gave me to work on when I got to this company. Um, and truth be told, I didn't know much about it. So my approach was, okay, what is unique about this game? And 
all I kept seeing was how hard this game was. And a lot of people said, don't talk about how hard it is because people won't want it. And I said, actually, <laughs> that's one of the reasons you would want it. It's almost like that big giant freckle or a mole on somebody's face where when they're young, they're self-conscious about it. As they get older, you're like, that's the most beautiful mole in the world. <laughs> so that's how we embraced the death of the game. That's how we came up eventually with Prepare to Die in that campaign. So okay. that's how we're kind of approaching all the things about Dark Souls is I love the fact that it's such a unique game. Quite honestly, it's pretty, it's pretty fun and easy to market a game that's like this because it has its unique positioning built in. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. The game comes out March 11th on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 and PC? PC is shortly thereafter. Okay, well thank you again. Thank you very much. Your wings will burn in anguish time after time. For that is your fate. The fate of the cursed.